Do you have self-doubt when it comes to government contracting? Are you afraid of what you sound like in terms of your voice or maybe what you sound like in terms of your writing and your proposals? If that's you, then this is an episode that you want to watch because we have today fellow GovCon Mafia member Maria Martinez interviewing fellow GovCon student and now alumni slash teacher Colin Enchoco, who has been with us since 2020. And when he came to me in 2020, he was a graphic designer in a graphic design company, but his background in GovCon stunted from him actually helping put together proposals for large businesses. So they would give him the proposal, he would add all the fancy graphics, make it look nice, they turn it in and win millions of dollars in contracts. Well, after a while of seeing that, he wanted more, right? And he wanted to go out on his own. And so he did that unsuccessfully for many years until he found us and our programs. And so in 2020, he decided to take the leap go from YouTube lives to watching us to joining our programs. And then I remember the time where the light bulb clicked for him because I was doing an episode with fellow GovCon superstar Judy Bratt and Colin made a comment in the live about making phone calls. And so the next time we got one of our private members only sessions, we discussed it. I told him I can't allow him to continue making excuses. So I kind of you know pushed him a little bit and then he agreed with me but he was blaming his language barrier on the reason why he was afraid to actually reach out beyond email. And so within two weeks of doing that, he picked up a contract and then another one. And so I'm not going to tell the entire story, but that's essentially the gist of it. And so today we're going to have him tell it in his own words. What was that experience like? What made the difference? Was it something I said? Was it something that went on in his head? And again, we're going to have him sit down with Maria Martinez because she's faced her own challenges with making phone calls and also having experiencing self-doubt on along her journey. So again, if that's you or that sounds like you or if you've been there before, you might want to stick around and stay tuned for this upcoming episode because this is very enlightening. Today, enjoy the episode. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Tell me your thoughts if you'd like to see more stuff like this. Hey, Maria and Colin, get your butts over here and let's get started. So... Today, we have an episode because this person has been long awaited for by many, many members. Um, they asked and asked and asked. And finally, with all of our busy lives, we finally were able to sit down and have this conversation. So the person, he doesn't need an introduction. If you've been with GovCon Giants for the past couple of years, you've seen him grow yourselves. You've seen how much he's flourished and everything. And today we're just going to sit down with him and just have a conversation of like how he got started, how he is where he is today, all the obstacles, all the good times, the bad times, everything and in between. But I am very honored and grateful to finally just have this conversation with you just because we started together and you are one of like the biggest members that have given back to us, have supported us and always hung up with us. So with no further ado, we're going to say hello to Colin. Hi, Colin. Bonjour, Maria. Comment ça va aujourd'hui? Oh, wait, hold on. Bonjour, monsieur. Comment ça va? Ça va bien, vous? Ça va très bien. <laughs> so, we're going to turn it back over to English so most of our people would understand and don't need to translate her app. Plus, that is as far as I go with my French. <laughs> you did good. You did good. That would be the end of our conversation. So, Colin... Um, and as you guys know or see, Colin, your company is A0 and it's based out of DC. And you actually started with us back at the beginning, like I was saying, like 2018. So can you just give us a brief intro of who you are as Colin the person, Colin the, the entrepreneur? So my name is Colin Chaco and I own and operate A0. It's a uh, branding and marketing company out in DC. Um, I specialize in uh, branding and marketing for the federal and state uh, sector only. And uh, I started in 2000, actually 2016 as a subcontractor. Um, I put an ad out, well, not, no, I didn't put it out, I'm sorry, uh, a prime. And at the I time, I didn't know what it was. I didn't know what a prime was. So I put a, uh, a prime, put an ad out on Indeed, and it was for their HUD contract, right? Doing e-newsletters. I was like, I can, I can do that. So I applied and then I got in, I uh, got hired. And it was uh, at the time, I think I was only making like 40 bucks an hour. And uh, at the time, 
um, I was trying to grow, you know, my old company. This is before I rebranded to eight zero, right? And um, I failed in my business twice. So this was a third time. I'm like, okay, if this doesn't work out, I may have to go get a job somewhere, right? Um, crazy, right? So at that time, I was a subcontractor. I did not know I could be a prime, right? So I was working, working. I said, okay. Um, but I, I asked myself, how's this guy getting money? Like, what kind of clients does he get? Because my first time I tried was 2007. Um, uh, I failed epically because I didn't know what I was doing. Um, and then I tried again in 2011, failed again because the problem I had was the clientele. I wasn't clear on the kind of clients I had to get to grow. So when I when I introduced when this person introduced me to government contracting, um, I was like, oh well, who you work with? Because this guy was making like 10 million a year, right? So I'm like, wait a minute, wow. he was doing he did uh, marketing communications. So I'm like, wait, how can I get this kind of contracts? So obviously, you know. Folks don't want to share what they're doing. You know what I mean? That's kind of what it was. So I was like, okay, I can't, I can't be stuck here. So in 2017, I started, you know, watching YouTube about how to grow your business, right? But I knew, I was like, I want to do what he does, you know? So I started Googling how to work with the government, right? Stumbled on a video about this guy talking about, yeah, you win contracts. His name was Eric Coffey. I'm like, wait, who's this dude? I'm like, hold up all these videos for free so i watched every last one of them start taking notes that's when i figured out i could be a prime like wait a minute if he's telling me i could be the prime and not the sub i could do this because remember as a sub girl i won't i won't get paid on time too that's the other problem being making some okay. right my invoice would be late by like months like i'm like okay this ain't gonna work because i would fail like that right again yeah and i was like it's not gonna work so 2017, um, I started watching YouTube. I found Eric. I started absorbing his content like, you know, Kool-Aid, literally. <laughs> so I started following him and started taking the steps. I, you know, registered my company in Sam's, started taking the steps to do contracting, but I didn't know how to write proposals. That was, that was my huge problem. I didn't know how to write proposals. So I was like, okay, that's going to be a problem, right? So I still absorb his content. Every time he came out with videos about how to register, how to kind of do subcontracting the right way. I said, okay, there's something here I can use. So I started looking at, uh, um, uh, when I was in Sam, looking at other clients in DSB, uh, DSB net, like uh, sub, SBA oh, subnet. Oh, this, Sorry. yeah. Sub, right? So I started finding clients who can actually, I said, okay, this person want to contract. This is back when uh, um, Fez Bizoff was up, right? <laughs> So I started looking at them. I said, okay, let me find other clients who can who I can work with. Because if I can do this with this person, I can do it with other people. So I got about two more contracts. Then I drop him. And I'm like, okay, let me even work with these people because they were paying me better and on time. Okay. So got, right? Then when Eric came to D, I'm like, wait a minute, is he coming to DC? I got to meet this guy. That's when I met you, Mary. It's the very first time. It was October of 2018. Mm -hmm. I was like, I got to stay on this. So when the course came out, I'm like, wait. I could take the course too. This is even better because guess what? Now there's a roadmap mm -hmm. of how I can actually be a prime, right? So in 2018, I took the course and, uh, you know, you know, I was up at 6 a.m. Li listening to what Eric was saying. He was like, man, you, you still on this thing? I said, yeah, man, because you never know. Like, you got to get off. I remember that one. So as you know, because we were all together, we were, you know, doing 2.0 and just absorbing. Yeah. So in 2019, I got my, I was really gaining traction as a subcontractor because now my past performance is building and building and building, right? In 2020, I got my first prime with uh, DC government. Um, it was a small award, you know, it was only 15K, but hey, it's better than nothing, right? But I was still subcontracting as uh, for these two other companies. And then in uh, 2020, I also got uh, put on as a, uh, I also primed uh, the private sector. But that only happened because I got, you know, contract with the uh, D.C. government, right? Now, fast forward, when the pandemic hit, it was very unfortunate for a lot of people. But for me, that was like a gold mine for me. It's like <laughs> I, I struck gold because everybody was like, hey, can you do this? Can you do this? Because remember, things were closing down. Yeah. And because I was already working remote, like, hey, can you help? So unfortunately, it didn't work for everyone else. But for me, it was like a gold mine. Now, and then in 2022, that's when I just hit gold. 
it really just took off because not only was I working with three three new primes, right? I got uh, based, and that was based off my DC government. Because when they say it, it, it rains, it does rain. When it rains, it, it pours. It's like a floodgate. <laughs> I'm literally standing there with a, with an avalanche of coming at me like, okay, this will work. So last year I got my first um, award of about a hundred thousand dollars. And I, you know me, I'm not shy about the numbers. <laughs> got a hundred thousand dollar award with uh, one of my DC agencies. And that's when everything just started taking off. So this year I'm looking to capitalize on that. And um, I'm, I'm set, I, I'm praying I hit my revenue goal, but I'm almost there. But again, you know, it's just doing the steps Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I've been able to partner with some fantastic companies who are also in the federal market and, you know, and we're working together on opportunities. I'm always, hey, can you do this? Can you do this? One of the biggest things I've learned from this community is working on partnerships. That's where you're going to get to, right, is building with other stuff, partnering with other companies, working with them. And we're just getting to this federal market. Um, I'm currently getting on GSA because I was told. The drop's about to hit when they when they go GSA, it's about to be people about to be hurt. So I'm working on that. And that was a direct um when I when I did my KBLE, KBLE's briefing last year, I um uh, I was told directly by an agency, we only do GSA. So I said, Oh, okay. So because 90% of my NICS code, that's where they source through the schedule. So I'm like, all right, well, I'm I'm gonna go with if they tell me that, I'm gonna do it. So that's what I'm doing now. Um, but Maria, I owe my entire success to GovCon, John, you and Eric, because without that course, I don't know where I would have been right now, probably working at W2, which, yeah, no, okay? Um, you know, for me, I, I really can't thank y'all enough between the books, the course, you know, I mean, meeting y'all at, you know, the conferences. It This community has has really helped me, and I'm, I'm here to say, you know, look, just, I, I really want to thank y'all from the bottom of my heart for <laughs> everything you've done for my business and the community. I really could not have done it without y'all. I just want to say that because <laughs> I think people underestimate the power of a community. Okay. They underestimate the power of a course with what you and Eric have built, I think has been invaluable to everyone, especially myself. But you got to do the work though. I'm going to tell y'all when y'all see this, you got to do the work. It's not automatic. Um, you know, I've put time and effort into work and it's not just making phone calls y'all and doing emails. You've got to go to the industry day. You got to meet people because, you know, it's not, they don't know you. You got to get yourself out there. One of the things that I did last year, or sorry, the last two years to be visible. Industry day, you're going to see me. I'm going to see you at that MBE summit, you know, in February. I'll be there, you know, with Eric. I know he'll show up. I'm going to say, hey, buddy, how you doing? Because he's been <laughs> here. So, you know, that's part of it is going to making sure, you know, getting in face-to-face -face with these contracting officers, getting to know you, you know. Um, in the last two months, I've secured two capability briefings with uh, National Park Service and uh, the follow-up USDA. So I have that on the books, you know, um, and just, again, building partnerships. And one thing I'll say is, again, thank you guys, because one thing I learned, Maria, from you and Eric with the GovCon Giant, um, you know, platform course is repeat business. Why go and try to get another agency when you can just get the same one over and over and over again? And I've, I've applied the GovCon giant framework methodology to my business, I kind of tweak some things to help me out. But I'm proud to say that every client I've had in the last three years, I've worked with them. This is my third year with their engagement. They've, they've, they've hired me again and again. We have a multi-year contract. So I don't have to worry about who am I going to go look for next year. So I'm fishing, but my basket's full because the same fish come back, hey, and, you know, let's work again and again and again. And that's what I, I'm here to say. Thank you all so very much. I really could not have done this without y'all. And, you know, look, I, I'll give back, though. You know me, I'm, I'm here for life. Yeah. Because hey. I really want everyone to understand how strong this community is and what, what has been put into place to help businesses like myself, yours, and all of us grow. Listening to you now, it's very different from two, three years ago. And I want to take it back because people hear that and that is that is I think a lot of our ultimate goal is to be where you are now but like you said you failed twice you've done you've done so much so I want to take a few years back and first because you did start with the French I want you to tell us like 
young Colin, where did he grow up? What, and I always ask because it's a kindergarten teacher in me. I'm like, what did you want to be when you grew up? Like, so I'm originally from Douala, Cameroon. Um, we're from the French side. My father had a, uh, he had a business, an electrical engineer for 35 years. He ran it. But uh -huh. when I was younger, it was, he was starting out. So I was able to see, you know, how it worked. You know, my, did I understand it? No. Mm -hmm. All I knew is my dad was working and he was trying to start, he was working a business. And uh, it wasn't until I was older that he hit his stride and it just took off from there until he retired. Then he went into real estate. Oh, but okay. Growing so up. Him growing, growing up, you saw a business from like- Yes, I saw company. like my dad. Okay. Yeah. My dad hired a contract before it was fashionable. He was like, I need to hire him full time. This, this is what I need. That's what now. And I emulated that model. So my model is 10 business model, 10 and 9. But you, you rehire the same people because mm -hmm. guess what? The client's now comfortable. Then you train them up so that you can, you can scale beyond yourself. My dad did the same thing. He fixed air conditioners. He did the wiring until he was able to train his staff. Now all he's doing is collecting his check and making sure the schematics were great. Um, his clients were Guinness, Shell, BP. Um, and I, I'll tell you, when we went to Ireland to do that Guinness plan, it was something different. This is back in the 90s. That is cool. Right. right. Um, we flew to Asia. I think we only had one client here. I don't remember coming here, though. I think it was too far. But we went uh, we went over uh, Nigeria, all over Europe, and Asia and the, during the summer. Because I, I, was, I was allowed to go when we were in school, when I was in school, because mm -hmm. he was like, going to school. I was like, can I just see? He's like, no, you're going to school. <laughs> so that was one of the most fondest memories of my childhood, watching him grow in Cameroon, grow the company, you know. Now, I was struggling at first. His name, no, it's no easy, but my dad decided, you know, he always told me either you got two choices in life. You could build someone else's dream and only get paid what they feel like you're going to make or go on your own and make what you really want to make. What are you going to do with your time? You're going to invest in yourself or you're going to invest in somebody else? Oh, that's and good. everyone in life has to come to that decision at some point in their life. Mm -hmm. Are you going to invest in yourself or are you investing in someone else's dream? You're building someone else's dream because who's making more money them because they took the risk, not you. And that's a good mentality to have like your dad, this was back in the days, um, yes. but it's a good mentality versus how I grew up. Like for us is work, 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 work. So it's good for people to hear, um, especially young parents to give that to their children very early on, because like you, it impacted how, what you were going to do for in your future. Like, yes. for, and for me, it's like, it's, and I think it's that work mentality and I don't know, it's a Latin thing, an America thing that you're supposed to just get a good job, good benefits, stay there, retire. That's the end. See, that, Instead of that like school of thought, building your dream. That school of thought was famous back in the 50s and 60s, right? Mm -hmm. In the 80s is kind of when people were like, I don't want to do that. Because you get your, you get your car, you get your gold ring, your plaque at the end of what, 30 years of service, mm -hmm. right? Which is fine back then. But that's back when things were a lot less expensive, right? That's back when one person salary can help hold a house down. Oh, that's right? true. And then you can stay home and take care of the kids, whichever mm -hmm. one it would where it work. Nowadays, it doesn't work like that. However, in the age of social media now, you could be a YouTube star. You could be an Instagram star. There's so many ways of making money. You don't have to go the corporate route. And then to me, I look at it like, Again, it's you only got one life. You're only eight, you're only one age once, and you're only able to do a career probably in a span of 40 years, which is like age 20 to 60. After 60, you can do something different, but you know, you get older, you know, you kind of want to relax at that point. But between the ages of 20 and, and 60, that's 40 years to change the course of your life, right? My father figured that out really early in life. My grandfather uh -huh. did the same thing. He was a farmer. He dealt with cocoa, peanuts, and chocolate, because that's kind of our main export in Cameroon, right? But he did it with Nigeria. So my dad learned from his grandfather. Yeah. I think my great-grandfather great did the same thing. I never met him because he died when I was little. I think so anyway. But in our family, we've only dealt with basically a bunch of entrepreneurs on my father's Oh, wow. Side. Yes. That's so in your so, blood. Basically, yeah, I mean, it was an, it was inevitable, you know. Um, now it doesn't, you know. I have a twin brother, but you know, he he does. He Did has he a get it? Nope. <laughs> it, it doesn't. It doesn't hit with anyone, you know. I mean, I'm not. 
I'm not a fan of, of clocking in. I'm, I'm just not a fan uh, of that, right? But what I'm saying is, um, it, it depends, you know. Now, my my, grand, my dad did have, like, he's the oldest of 17 siblings. But not everyone had, young, yeah, I know, I know. Yes, my, my grandfather had two wives. I would never do it, stressful as hell. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, my dad was the one who went the entre entrepreneurial route. And it, it served him, because it's hard. Like, it's not easy especially when you have a family to take care of. It's very hard, you know? Mm -hmm. So, but, you know, you know, in, in Africa is different. You know, you, you have help like nannies, chauffeurs, butlers, <laughs> but, you know, here it's a little harder because, you know, you don't have that extra help. However, to me, I feel like you only have one life. What are you going to do with it? You know, I mean, we all want to retire early, but if you don't set yourself up to do that, Social Security ain't going to pay nothing. Oh, Think not about anymore. it, right? Not, right, anymore. not anymore, exactly, with things going up and up and up. So, and I'm all about different streams of income as well. You know, my dad now, he, he, long, he, he hasn't been working, he shut the company down 10 years ago okay. after making all his money, and now he's doing real estate, right? So, which is good for him because he don't got to do anything except collect his check, that's it. Oh. So that's something that, you know, I'm looking into too over there because it's different, you know? Because um, in Cameroon, you get your money up front. You have to pay a year up front. Oh, yeah, that's how it is. That's the law. <laughs> you, you, yeah. Who's going to want if you come on? Because things happen, right? If something happens, OK, you got a year to catch up. Not like here where they put you out after three months. Yeah. Right. So, again, because my upbringing is very different. That's why I would say. How, how old were you when you grew up in Cameroon? Was it? Uh, I think I was 20. Oh, so your whole yeah. life was that. Yeah. Girl, I, yeah. I've been here about 22 years. OK. So, you know, I mean, I went to Howard, you know, um, got a full ride, full scholarship. Um, Cause you know me, I, I, you know, for me, I believe in, you know, when it comes to working, I have an ethic, like just do what you gotta do to get where you wanna go. You know, um, you see a lot of, unfortunately you see a lot of examples of people who are older that you, you may not wanna see. And so for me, it's like, what do you want your life to look like? You know, um, and it is scary. You know, when I first started on business, I didn't know what I was doing. I made all the mistakes in the world. So you know, when you went to Howard, what was your major? It was actually traditional animation, like hand drawn animation. Okay. So you yeah. always knew you want you like the creative I, things. Yes. I want yeah, oh yeah. My I was lucky because my parents always supported me drawing, which is not traditional in African families. It's like either you do engineering or doctor or lawyer. Those are oh. two things. I'm like, yeah, y'all no. I'm not doing that. But my parents were always supportive of it, right? So that was a good thing, right? It's not common where I'm from. It's like, no, you got to do something that makes money. But what people don't understand is you can make money almost every anything you do, you just got to know what you're doing. And you got you to learn, okay, how I'm going to tweak this, right? Now, in our culture, we were I was supportive, which is not supported, which is not common. And like most people like either lawyer, doctor or um, engineering. Those are the three main avenues that most people in our family think is going to make money, but that's not always the case. Oh. Or IT, well, IT is kind of like the same thing. That's, yeah, right? yeah. So, yeah. but in my field, I feel like if you get the, the right client, you're good. I think you can make money in almost any industry, any, any creative thing you do. You just got to figure out how, where to find a client that's going to support the business. Your what did business. you plan to do with it, with the drawing? So originally I wanted to go to Disney, but they stopped doing traditional animation. Um, and so I tried my hand at, uh, I was in Japan for about a couple of years and working at Madhouse. That didn't really work out because of language barrier, right? That's a whole other story, but that didn't work out. So I was like, all right, I'm come back. Um, and then when I came back, I said, okay, I really need to get this business like geared up. So that's why um, after I did that, I went to, um, I looked into what what can I do to really blow up? And that's when I looked mm -hmm. into government contracting. And that's after I got hired by this guy. Because you really have to, my light bulb moment was when I was seeing, um, I was in the office in 2016. Uh -huh. I saw an invoice for my client invoicing HUD. It was like $200,000. I'm like, wait, what? And it was like three months. That's all three months worth of work. Wow. I'm like, I'm doing something wrong. And I'm doing the work. I'm the one doing the work, uh, right? That's my part of the, right. 
my part of the invoice was about 20K, right? But I'm like, I'm subbing, making 20, but you're making 10 times that. What do I do to get to that set mm -hmm. part? That's when I started doing the research. And that's when I started at looking. That's how I found Eric. And when, when I lit, absorbed everything he was talking about, I'm like, oh, I can prime. Because you don't know what you don't know. No, because you're as a sub, you're like, oh, they're paying me. It's good enough money. But you, like you right. said, you never think about how much they are getting paid. Right. I didn't know you. I didn't know a prime existed. I didn't know that existed. Yeah. You just get a job. Just, they give you yeah. a contract. Right. I'm thinking, well, I'm working for him. It's no different than a W-2, except that you got to pay your own taxes. Mm. Right. And I'm like, wait a minute. How do I go straight to the source? I'm, I'm, I, I was essentially going through a middleman to get to the prime. The, mm -hmm. I mean, the prime client, the contract, the, yeah. the, the, um, the agency. When I found out I can, I can jump over that person, I was like, okay, this is it. That's why I went hard on the course. And I'm like, I'm never going to be a middleman again, ever. So for the last two years, I've been going hard on primes only and only managing. And I'm still, you know, working with my subcontractors. Mm -hmm. um, not some, some sorry, the uh, primes as a subcontractor, but I'm that that is being I'm doing less and less and less of that. Okay, now you said you failed twice. Yes. So your first business was at what age and what was twenty seven. So my ex girlfriend and I tried to do this business together. That was an epic you fail. That's the first mistake. <laughs> yeah, that was oh, girl. <laughs> it, yeah, that was not. Yeah, it didn't work out. So, so what kind of business time, was it? Oh, same thing, creative. Okay. So my mistake the first time, uh, we were going on Craigslist, mm -hmm. you know, to look for contracts. And I'm like, that's not going to work. Huh. And the mistake I made back then was we were young, right? So she was doing a business development. I was doing uh, the creative. But none of okay. us, we, were, we didn't know what we were doing. We weren't even trained on it. Yeah. So it was really my fault because I did not invest the time into training her and myself, too, like, we didn't take no classes on how to do this. It was like, okay, because here's what I was thinking. I'm thinking we're going to grow this business, get married, have a bunch of kids and keep it moving. But I didn't understand, like, this is not how that worked. Like, yeah, this is like, because this would have been our livelihood, right? Mm -hmm. So it didn't work out. So that was that. The second time was um, I failed because I met a very dear friend of mine who helped me with marketing. And he told me, you are not going to make it the way you're going. And so I actually shut down the business and I say failed twice because I tried doing it on my own and it was a catastrophe. Mm -hmm. So when I met him, he said, Colin, you need to redo your whole entire strategy. This was 2012. So okay. in 2012, um, I lost everything, my apartment, everything. Like it was like do or die. So I lost everything. Um, I got evicted from my apartment. This is as real as it gets. So I met him in a coffee shop. And as he was like, because at that point, I was um, I was living with a friend of mine on their couch, right? Wow. So I was like, this is not happening. I, it, it couldn't get any worse than that, right? Car was about, was about I was about three months away from getting my car repoed. Because that was the only thing I had to my name at that point. And he said to me, you need to start from scratch. So what I did was, I said, okay. I shut the business down completely and just started went temping. When I say restart, I'm talking about zero. Killed all my clients, which weren't paying nothing, like $200 a, a day, like for doing nothing. Like I was charging like $200 for a logo. I needed money, right? Mm -hmm. I literally shut everything down and we started from scratch. I went to do temp agency work to build, rebuild up the portfolio, mm -hmm. right? For three years. And then I took that portfolio and that's where I went on Indeed looking, okay, let me see what I can find. That's when I stumbled upon this guy. And that's how I got my first intro into government contracting, right? After that, I started working with him because he was my only client at the time, right? I was able to secure another apartment because I had to pay up front because again, <laughs> I was broke as hell, right? And, and then once I got into that, I, I met, uh, went on YouTube to see what am I doing wrong? Because yeah. 20K is okay, but ain't nothing when, when you got to survive, right? And after that, when I got into government contracting through him, then Eric was like the, 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 the mash under my butt. Like he lit the fuse and I'm like, wait, what? what? What is this prime business on YouTube? 
and the, the, the very specific video it was, he was talking about subs versus primes. Mm -hmm. I will never forget that video. A prime is somebody who <laughs> takes the contract and, you know, they give it to the sub and, you know, they control the actual money. They work directly with the contract officer. I'm, I'm trying to do his voice as best I can remember. <laughs> and a sub is a person who, you know, they, they, they get hired by the prime. And then, you know, you may get paid, you may not, depending on, I'm like, oh, that's my situation. I'm looking, I'm like, oh, this guy's talking great to me. That's my situation. So how do I become a prime? Mm -hmm. So when I did that, I said, okay, I need to get to a prime status. That's when, when y'all came to DC in December, I mean, in October of 2018, I'm like, I got to meet this guy in person. So I can see what he's talking about. And after that, girl, the rest is history. And then you said you rebranded your business during yes. the pandemic. So Why? during the pandemic, um, I rebranded my business through a, a uh, recommendation of a prime contractor. And, and I'm sorry, not a prime contractor, a contracting officer oh. who was with HUD, actually. Yes. So I was working with the contracting officer at the time who has a sub because we had to talk. He's like, Colin, you know, um, I asked him, I said, sir, how can I get you know in front of an agency? He was like, well, first of all, I don't understand your name. You know, I'm like, it was Sure. It means smile in French. And it, no one understood it. It was like, I mean, I, I was long. I came up with the name of Howard back way back when. And so I turned it. It was I, I in 2018, I converted to an LLC from a sole proprietorship. Again, mm -hmm. I didn't know anything about business, that part of it, right? He said to me, you need to rebrand something you actually people actually pronounce. It has to be meaning. I said, okay. okay. So 2020, I decided, okay, let me rebrand this thing to A0. Now, A0 is the, it was the name of, um, it means 80, which, because 1980 wasn't available, but it's the year I was born. So, 8080, the year I was born. That's what I did, right? So, now it made more sense. So, I, re, I re retrofitted the entire business, renamed it, put it through the paperwork, and that, the rest is history, and got all the merch, the whole nine. So, when I present, what does A0 mean? Oh, it's 1980, the year I was born. That's meaningful. Yeah. That makes sense. That's the story. Right? Now, now I get the name. Now I'm like, okay, now I the see it. The old name made absolutely no sense whatsoever. People look at me like, wait, what does it mean? I kind of have to explain it. So the contract officer told me rebrand, reposition, remessage. This was a year, no, a couple months before the pandemic. He said, you, you do that, I promise you'll get in front of people. He did that. I secured two subcontracts as a subcontractor. And Aussie with uh, DC, I got a contract with them. And last year, I was able to secure another uh, as a prime an agency. So, and my clients, the private sector ones, renewed because now they my positioning was solidified mm. because of what the CEO told me and the reinforcement I got from the courses and the YouTube videos about on what Jumpcon Johnson is. It is. Yeah. That's the, so. That's where I'm at right now with everything that I was worth from all y'all. Because one thing I've learned about the course is ask questions. <laughs> Did you always ask questions? No, I was scared because <laughs> now, so one of the things that I was very um, afraid to do was, was email. Well, no, phone call. Email is fine, but phone calls. Because I speak French. It's easier. Now, I sound like people are like, oh, you, you, you can't be shot. Yes, I was. I would you call and see you now and get to know you now. Yeah. The members coming in. And then I'm like... He used to be very quiet. Like he Let me tell you. scared. And I don't think they could picture that seeing the nah. confidence you have now. Yes, because my first call with the CO was a disaster, DOL. I was stuttering. He was like, uh -huh. calm down. I was, because I, I couldn't he get told the words. you to calm down. Yes. He's like, sir, your portfolio is stellar, but you need to calm down. He's like, look, you got to no. keep practicing. He was nice. He was yeah. nice about it. So then. He was like, look, what's going on? I said, look, I'm, I'm trying to just, because I was scared. I was literally scared. I did not want to mess up. It was my only opportunity, you know? So he said, calm down. It's okay, sir. I get it. It's not your first language. So you know what he did? He transferred me to someone who actually did speak French. We had a chat and the guy was like, look, you need to learn English because most people can't. I said, I know, I know. So that was kind of like for me, the, see, I've never talked about this in depth, but mm -hmm. that's what happened. And so ever since then, I've been practicing the mirror. Okay, Colin, stay in the mirror and just say, just repeat the script. This is what you got to do. This is how you say it. If you're not going to get ahead, if you do not master this one, oh, wow. it is holding you back. 
And and honestly, Maria, I've had ex like contract officers, Asabu say, you are good at what you do, but your language is what's holding you. You got to get it together. And it, and a lot of it was reinforced by you and Eric Kahn. What are you doing? You were literally sitting there like, you know, not saying nothing. And when I got over that hump, y'all, when I tell you mm -hmm. now, I'll compete against Eric on a contract. I'll, I'll, I'll take him. I'm like, look, I'll take you on too. Anybody. Because what was that the confidence day, boost then? It was me thinking. So the confidence booster was me was all of, the only person holding myself back is myself. Mm. I can't blame nobody else. I can't say, oh, this is, I can't blame the CEO for saying, I don't want to talk to you. You know why? Because I'm not eloquently explaining what I'm, how I can help them. I'm not, I'm not eloquently explaining how I can be of service to the agency's mission specific goal. If I, it's like a date. I'm, I'm, if I'm trying to court you, right? If I'm trying to court you and I'm not, my words ain't coming out, you're going to be like, yeah, I'm not, I'll, I'll pass. <laughs> it's a dating game. Yeah. Yeah. And it's surprising because now you help us lead our learning sessions and all of this. So everything that you've learned has led to you now transferring all those obstacles, the speaking on the phone, all the, that confidence you're transferring over to our new members, which it's awesome because now you get from everything you did. Now you get to give it to the next cohort of people. It's hard. I mean, and I can say it's different because I saw my father growing up. It's different when you see it. But unfortunately, a lot of people, especially our students, they may not have seen that growing up. No, many of us you know have. What I'm saying? So, right. You, if you, it is very different when you have a parent. Like my dad groomed me unconsciously. I didn't know that. And even now, he's like, okay, what are you doing? Like, he, he's still checking, like, okay, if you did this, what's your next revenue goal? What's your next? Then I'm like, dad, it's hard. Now nah, I don't want to hear that because I did. Without social media, without a cell phone, <laughs> I had to, he, he tell me like, yeah, you have no excuse, but it's pushing me to be better. My father tells me all the time, do you want to be at my level at my age or better? Yeah, dad. Okay, well, this is what you need to do because mm -hmm. I want you to be better than me. I want you to be more successful than I was. And I'm going to push you until you get there because I don't want you struggling at 70 years old or 80 years old. I don't want you doing that. You don't deserve that. It's not what you're here for. That's for awesome to point. have. Yes. You tell me that every, every, when we talk, you tell that's what yeah. that's what you tell me. It's encouraging. You know, and so I give back because I want people to avoid the mistakes I made. I want people to understand it's okay to have a W-2, but you got to have an exit plan. This is for GovCon journey is not for people who don't have an iron will. You got to have an iron will. Eric's first contract in his book was $150,000. Did he stop there? No. Did he say, I'm going to stop at one fifty dollars and just do, nah, because you got to grow. His next contract was what? one point five million. He 10 x it, and he just went up from there. Then he built a community to see, hey, let me teach everyone else what I learned yeah. so that everyone can impart on it. And it's only going up from there. Yeah, I remember when we started, when I met Eric to end of 2017, that Christmas, we hit a thousand people on YouTube. Yeah. This past month, we hit 30,000. Yes, and it's, so we're, we're getting to a million. Has, it has grown immensely yes. in the past few years. And so also, here's the other thing, because everyone's like, I want a contract, I want a contract, I want a contract. They don't see the work. And that's why we do this. They don't see what goes into it. They just hear the beginning of this interview where Colin was like, yeah, I have my almost hitting my revenue goal. I hit the gold mine. And now I'm looking at GSA schedule because that's what you're telling me to. So I just wanted to go back to that feeling of getting your first prime contract in 2020. What was that feeling of? Okay, so in 2020, I will describe it as hitting a high note as a singer and the feeling your audience gets when they hear when they see you hit that high note, like Whitney Houston used to do, <laughs> or being at the 1982 concert with Michael Jackson live performance, the high. That's, what it is, it, it is a massive confidence booster. Mm -hmm. It's not about the money. It's about 
I did this. I can do this, right? I can change my life for the better. I can provide for my family. I can provide for my offspring. I can provide for, you know, I can live the life I want. It, it, it's not about the money because the money's going to come. You just got to put the work in. Like, like you've always said, Maria, prime the pump. Eric says, prime the pump. You're going to hit that pump until that water come out. Mm -hmm. It sprinkles at first. Then there's droplets. Then it, hold, then it floods. Now, what happens when, 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 when you got a droplet? You got to have a bucket, right? The bucket's mm -hmm. there. You're like, oh, man, this ain't working, right? Now, what happens in a bucket represents you, right? You're collecting slowly but steady. Mm -hmm. Now, what happens when the, the, the literal, the faucet overflows? Now you got to have another bucket and mm -hmm. another and another. And what do those other buckets represent besides yourself? Your team. The people who are going to support you when that water's overflowing and you can't hold the entire bucket of water by yourself. So you add other people. You multiply and scale beyond you to upscale. I have been blessed to use my creativity, my skill to support not only agencies in the federal and state sector, but also other primes as well who need my skill and contracts they want. But I've also built beyond myself. I have a great team who helped me out when I'm like, okay, I need y'all to help me out. They do it, you know? But yes, that first high is, is short-lived though because you can't <laughs> stop there. You got to keep going. I was in less, oh God. And now I said to myself, all right, let me keep looking for contracts that don't stop there. But what you don't want to do, and this is what people, unfortunately people do, they stop. Yeah. And then what happens is now you're in a situation where the contract ends, but you ain't got nothing else, right? You got to keep priming. You got to keep going. You got to keep looking. And I'm a huge fan of hiring people to help. We're not, we can't do everything ourselves. This past year, I've invested in professional development, you know, books, other courses to help me. And I've also invested in team, like a, a writer, a videographer, web designer. And I have multiplied myself. What are the skills that I hate doing mm -hmm. that I offer that I don't want to do? You're selling other people's skills. And that's very and important that you you expanded beyond yourself. Even though you started yeah. by yourself, you've realized like, I don't have to do it all. No. And I think a lot of us, um, that's where a lot of people fail of trying to do it all just themselves. No. You know what we're selling? You want to guess what we're selling as service providers to the agencies? What? We're selling outcomes. Yeah. They don't care how it gets done as long as it nope, gets done. They don't care. They don't think, no. It's like, hey, this Marie, is what I want. This? this is what I need you to give me. Right. They don't care. And that's why I tell our students, the government don't care how you do it. Just get it done. Mm -hmm. The outcome that you're, you're providing an outcome for them, they have outcomes they need to deliver. They have outcomes they're responsible for. If you can provide it, they will, they'll come. But you, but they, but, but you got to see, you got to be visible. That's why those Cape State, those Cape briefings are important. Mm -hmm. Sources saw are important. The, you know, answering those sources saw, answering those RFIs, you know, because that's free market research to them. Emailing a CO on a forecast and saying, hey, I see there's an incumbent. Why is this out still out there? Are you not happy with them? Mm -hmm. You don't know if you don't ask, right? There on a phone go. call. I'm and and I was that. at an industry day yesterday and she said that the lady from the Coast Guard was there and she's like, because somebody asked us, like, how come they don't give it out? Or she's like, well, why why do you guys go to eight days? She's like, because when I put it out in Sam as a source to sell or do the market research, nobody answers. Exactly. So these you people would think tell you were. this, we tell you this, yet people still don't care to do it. Events DC, um, they're very, they're, they have a lot of, uh, um, a lot of the events in DC, right? Yeah. A lot of the agencies have uh, what they call a uh, well, um, site walkthroughs, like proposal, pre pre proposals, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Some of them will be in virtual, some will be in person. One of my new strategies, uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if it's going to work yet, but we'll see, um, is, well, I have two strategies now. One of them is going to the, the uh, site visit and saying, okay, I will bid X amount on a con this contract and whoever wants to beat me, let's negotiate right now. 
that <laughs> way, yeah, no, I'm serious. I've done it once. It didn't really work out, but you never know, right? Now, what Everything happened at the experiment? So you have yeah, to because try it here's out. the thing, right? Exactly. One of the things that um I would say is no one wants to read proposals, right? Now, right now, um, I've been blessed to be answering RFQs only. You put in your cover letter, you put in a quote, you send it, you're done. And those those RFQs are like three pages. That's it. That's all they want to read. My last uh, award, which was uh, February, uh, was it last August, was an RFQ. I bid it. I bid. I got um, when the contract came in. I'm like, wait, is this real? I'm sitting there like, this guy's. This got to be a confusion. So I bid the I bid the job for about 35k, which was probably the lowest. But they gave it to me. But guess what happened? They they the purchase order was for a lot more than that. And I told the lady, look. I got your back. I will help you. I know I'm new. They're like, yeah, we know. We know. We ain't see you in the system. I said, look, I got your back. So what I've been able to do is I always go above and beyond for mm -hmm. my clients because I want them to understand I'm here for you. We're, we're like a married couple at this point. She was laughing, but it was the truth. <laughs> and I've delivered over and over and over again. And what I was able to do was um, it was a four-year contract. So they're very happy. This is what I say this to say provide top-notch service. And when I say top, I'm talking about 24-hour turnaround time. Mm. And so what I do now is I when I go to site visits, I say, okay, let's negotiate right here, right now. Why? It's going to do two things. A, you're already going to know who I'm, you're staring me in the face. I'm a potential vendor. And number two, you ain't got to read anything. Let's talk now. Now, some people say, you can't be sure. Yes, I am. <laughs> Every vendor was looking at me like, is he serious? I said, yeah. I said, here's what the job is worth. About 150000 do it done properly. But what you're going to do is you're going to pay that person's overhead, that person's overhead. Whereas with me, I'm giving you the straight up cost. Okay? Well, what makes you different than everyone else? I'm asking you right now to work with me because everyone's going to charge, is going to overcharge because you're paying for their building, you're paying for their staff, you're paying for everything. I'm giving you this. I'm, I'm, I am not the middleman. I'm the supplier. If you want to come come straight to me, if you want to work, one guy was like, "You you you you're serious." I say yes. It's a heart attack. <laughs> He's they're still trying to figure out you were serious. Why? Why would you do that? So do what? Why would you sit here and say that? Well, because the contracting officer is sitting right over there. Is going to have to read fifty proposals, and that's not including the ones of the people who haven't shown mm -hmm. up. So, Mister Contracting Officer, what do you say? Uh, he he couldn't he didn't he couldn't say nothing. This is the first time ever. He's like, sir, this is the first time someone ever done that. I'm like, I know. But we're all competition. We're all here. You are only going to pick one out of us, one person. Now, the job never came out because they were probably like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> but it was a strategy. And I'm, I'm going to employ that. You know, okay. yeah, you never know. Because one thing I've learned in contracting is you got to think outside the box. Yes, the process is the same. However, when it comes to comp to, to bidding, you got to think about, okay, how can I make this process as painless as possible to the CO? All I'm doing is asking for a uh, sole source without the reading part. Let's let's negotiate. Sign here. What do you want to do? Because think about it. They it's say funny. yes. We're laughing now, and people thought you are crazy then. And right. one day you're going to come back, and you're going to tell us it worked. Oh, I'm I'm trying it. And the other, the other, and I'm, well, I'm still on my secret, but it's all good because it's all in the, in the spirit of education. One other thing I do now is that any past forecast list, like last year, that hasn't been uh -huh. fulfilled, I will email the contracting officer and say, "Hey, did you fulfill this last year? If it's not, because I'll do a comparison: 2022 forecast list versus 2023." And mm -hmm. I got a one ping. One guy said, "No, nah, I wasn't. Are you still interested in doing that?" potentially oh, let's talk they need it but guess what no one answered they didn't get it so what why not because you know what they're not going to do they're afraid to put it back out there the next year because no one's going to answer so i'll go and say was this order fulfilled mm -hmm. this particular forecast you know opportunity that you put out there was your name did you fill it no we did not are you interested in filling it potentially but you know what they're doing unfortunately they're afraid to do it because they're thinking they're going to get the same result. Yeah. That's where I come in. So I got three people so far, so I'm following up on for that. 
hopefully it'll it'll but you know i'll keep y'all posted but these are my out of the box strategies to win you know a federal award as a prime because i you know i'm still working on that you know um yeah. it's hard but you know what we gotta do is stay the course so 2020 you had your first prime and yes. then you said 2020 that's when the gold mine hit was like came yes and 2022 you said i hit big yes what was it in 22 that that you did differently and what is that hit big for you so in 2022 i changed my strategy in terms of bidding um what i did was i did my market research in depth um when solicitations came out um I went into the system, started looking up all the incumbents that potentially would win based on past contract performance, NACE code, but they're, but like basically who won the contract under the in the last four years. I called them up. Hey, how are you doing today? Um, this contract is coming out. I saw you won this last year. I'd be very interested in subbing with you um, if you win. Now, I saw that you won this contract under this amount, would you be interested in partnering together? If you win, now would you be bidding the same amount? Yeah, we'll be, we'll probably build the same amount, but you know, we're, we're good on our subcontract. We, we have people. Okay, no problem. Pick, put the phone down, pick up the next guy, the next person, next person. Did the same thing on the federal side, and but more, it works better on the state side because you oh, got okay. all, what you do is you, you look up all the purchase orders that the agency paid the contractor and you make a list. Then you put you cross reference that against the uh, the payment in, invoices, right? So you do that against the contract, the purchase orders. You do a running list, and then what you do is you say, okay, here's who bought what and how much they paid. You call the contractor and say, I want to sub for you if you win again because you won in the last three years. Of course, they're going to bid again because yeah, you know what they're thinking. They're not going to let go. Right, right. they're not going to let go. Right, so. I called them. They said, are you going to bid this? Yes. They're not going to go down in price. They're going to bid what they want. So what I did is I went, okay, let me bid on this opportunity and chop them up in 50%. I put 50% less than what they were going to, what, what they bid it on last year. That's how I won the first award in 2022. Was it even profitable if you're put, taking it down at Oh, half? God, no. No, I wouldn't have been profitable at all. But you know what? I want the opportunity. That's what I'm looking at. And plus, it was it it was a uh, it was uh, a four year contract with four base option years. Of course, I'm gonna. I mean, it, I would have made my money out on the other end of it. Because what people don't understand is when you're bidding first time in, you sometimes you gotta take a hit. You either gotta take a hit, right? Now, was it a was it a gamble? Yes, but I won, and they gave me the entire amount. I they gave me more than what I bid it on because they're like, well, what's wrong with him? Yeah. Him, right? See? Then what I did was when I got in. I, I did, I knocked the first project out the gate. They were like, good Lord, this guy's good. Then I, I in December, I negotiated, because the contract started in September of last year. December, I said, look, I went in there and said, okay, here's what we're doing for the first year. Is there any contracts that you're, that you're working with any other agency that I can do, right? Let's bring all this in-house. They're like, what are you talking about? You have four contractors that are making less than me on contracts that I can do and the same with, with less. Here's what I got awarded. They're making 10, 20 K. That's all you're paying. You can give me that money. Let's, what are we doing? Why not consolidate everything? They said, wait, what? I said, think about it. You're paying four other agencies to do what I can do. Mm -hmm. and not a, and not a headache. You're putting out what? four different purchase orders when I can do the whole thing. They're like, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, let's talk. We sat down at a conference table with leadership. I said the same thing to them. They said, you know what? You're right. We're going to consolidate all the contracts and give them to you. I said, yeah, because just bring it in house. Hey, I can hire them if you want me to, but give me give me, give me, me the main, con all of them, because it makes no sense to pay me five times what you're paying them, but you're, you might as well give me the whole thing. I'll take the cake. The guy said to me, to my face, really? And the lady was like, are you ready for the heat? I said, yes, bring it. So we're in the process now of negotiating, of them bringing out, are the contract going to be very upset? Yes. Maybe I go, they'll live. But this is what I mean when I say acquisition, getting your, like going for it. And I learned that from you and Eric. 
Go for what you want. Don't be afraid to ask. I consolidated everything. 2023 is about to, it's, it's about, I'm about to get real, like it's going to get <laughs> hot in the kitchen right now because now they're coming at me like, we need this, 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 this. I said, okay, here you go. Here you go. Here you go. And it's like clockwork. Why? Because I asked for it. They asked, they said, you can handle it. Yes, I can. Because it makes no sense to pay other contractors a little amount when you could bring, when we just pay one person yeah. you're dealing with me now would, would one say you're stealing the contract yeah but you know it's okay it'll be okay <laughs> be i'm fun. not afraid of that you know it's competition because somebody is there's someone out there that's plotting against me to steal my car but it's not going to happen because i'm like look i'm married to my client <laughs> but i say that to say that that's strategy you gotta just take the course framework and reuse it, rebuild it to fit your needs. Yeah. That's all I did. I took Eric's GovCon framework, all the advice he, you and him gave, both in person and online, and re reframed it to what I need to work for my business. It's not a one size fits all, but you got to do the work though. So when that happened, I'm like, okay, great. And they told me, Colin, are you sure about to say, as a heart, I, I got you. But it wasn't without, because they're going to have doubts. No one says, give me all the work and I'll handle it. Because I said, would you rather deal with five vendors or one? And when they took it to leadership, leadership, okay, fine. Yeah. This is only one agency. I'm not to do it for the rest of them. Because in that situation, that's how you scale to the Accentures of the world, the Buzans of the world, the line of the Raytheon. They get billions. But at some point, they were small. But yeah. they grew. So you're working so, your GSA schedule now. Yes. And yes. You said you're about to hit your goal. So yeah, well, yeah, I hope so. I'm hoping so. I hit my um mid goal. I hit it because I got I gotta finish this house. And then um my next goal, uh, I'm hoping to hit that by 2024. Once I achieve my uh my prom my federal goal of being a prime, I think I'll get there. Right now, I'm doing it locally, but the Fed is going to put me over that. I'm trying to get the next to the next tax bracket of about a million dollars a year. That's what I'm trying to get to. After that, I'm, I'm still going to keep going, right? Not stopping. Yeah. But I'm, I'm putting in the work, building the relationships, and you know, working on everything I need to work on to get to that goal. But the way I'm going to get there is through partnerships, working with other primes, you know, but also going agency direct as well as a prime. Because right yeah. now I'm doing it as a sub. So, you know, it's getting me there, but it's not, I'm, you know, I want to get there as a prime because that's gonna that's gonna put me over the hump as my um Ostabu told me, because we talk every week. She's like, look, here's what you need to do. If you want to get to that goal, this is mm -hmm. exactly just what you need to do and get on GSA because that's where we buy. And that's you know it, me. And that's it is. People hear about all these certifications or schedules or this or that. And they, like you did the research and found out that is how most of your stuff goes out. Somebody yes. told you directly. So now it's the time for you to do it instead yes. of just doing it just because that's what everyone says I'm supposed to do. Most people make the mistake of jumping on a certification early before they even told. Um, the only other certification I have, well, the only one I have is a certified business enterprise, which is in DC local. Um, that's all you need. Because all the contracts are up into they're tied into that. It's only for DC businesses, you know. So that's is good. Federal, again, you know, I was doing the work like everyone else, mm -hmm. uh, Sam.gov, until during the capabilities briefing, I was told 90% of what we do is on is tied to a schedule. GSA, if you want to work with us, get on that schedule and come back and talk to me. But you know what I did? I nurtured that relationship over time. To the point where last year I got a forecast list before it came out. So now, guess what I'm doing? I'm identifying. You know what all of them said? GSA, federal supply schedule, mass schedule. I'm like, okay, they were not joking about that. So now, because I was explicitly told what to do, I'm like, okay, great. Now I got to market it. But hey, you no. Know, because that's the best way to, agencies are going to, they're going to tell you straight to your face, 
here's what you need to do to work with us. I don't care if it's GSA, GWAC, all the other schedules, PICS2 with NIH. They're going to tell you, here's the schedule we're on, mm -hmm. right? And, and it doesn't matter what category it is, right? So if you're not on that, then if they tell you to first, if they don't tell you, then you just do what you got to do. But I'm a huge fan of asking an agency, how do you buy your products and services? That's the first question I asked them after I asked them how their day was. How do you buy? What and percent of your contracts? You're not scared of asking either. No, no, because if I'm trying to work with them, it's like, okay, it's like dating. If I'm asking, okay, Maria, what's going to make you happy? What's going to put a smile on your face every single day? I'm looking at you we're together. What are you going to tell me? If I don't do that, then I'm not going to get to you, right? Yeah. You're literally telling me verbatim, this is what will make me want to work with you. That's it. And actually doing it. It's the second part of it all. Well, that too, yes. Because <laughs> what it is is... Walk away. And right. does, no, 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 no. Then they wonder the why it's not working. Exactly. I have been cultivating two relationships with two federal agencies for the last two years. And now that I'm almost close to getting my GSA schedule, I'm just waiting for them to get back to me. Because you know, oh. it takes forever. When I get that, I'm going to go back to them and say, look, here's what you had on your forecasts for the last three years. Have you hit any of these goals? They're tied under the mass schedule. They're like, yeah, we 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 are. But guess what they do? They put on hold because no one's answering. When I first talked to my um, contact, she told me there was a half, uh, sorry, quarter million dollars in, 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 in uh, work in my under my NACE code, graphic design, 5413, I'm sorry, 541430, that nobody wanted because it was tied under multiple mm. small amounts, 2,000, 1,000, but it added up to a quarter million dollars. Nobody wanted it. Because, you know, when people make, when people start making a certain amount, they're like, I don't want that. I'll yeah. take it. So they were like, the lady was like, well, if you had it, we'd have given it to you because nobody won. I'm like, all right. She's like, her can get on GSA so I can give it to you. I said, okay. So that 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 put a fire in me. Like, okay, let me get this thing. Because what happens is even GSA, right? When you go up there, certain, they don't, they don't, they're not always hurt, hitting their goal because sometimes it comes, they may only need one little thing. You know what I'm a fan of? P, P card. Swipe, done, done. Swipe, pay, delivered. You're done. Here you yeah. go. But guess what? If you do it over and over and over there, guess what you're now building? Confidence in that CO. Mm -hmm. Hey, Colin, I need your help. What happened? I need this. We need a brochure. We need this. We need that. We need a campaign. How mm -hmm. long is it going to take? Two months? Okay, great. Swipe, swipe, done. And guess what? We keep going. Five years, we do it again and get up to 20 years. Who doesn't want that kind of work? And it's but the biz, the, right? But the key thing is building confidence in yourself and confidence in the contracting officer. So they're looking at you like this person is a dependable individual. It's not about your company. It's not about what you can offer. It's about do I can I trust this person mm -hmm. like I trust my spouse? <laughs> That's they don't trust you. They ain't gonna work with you. That's true. It's building those relationships. And like you said, right. you're this year and last year, you're starting to be more visible because you have to right. get out there. Like if you look at my schedule and I'm just like, oh, like th yesterday I was at an industry day here at Sammy. Like I met the president elect of the whole organization yes. all because I was just, I was like, oh, I'll volunteer. I'll help. I'll do that. And all I did was click on his slides because he couldn't do it himself. So now we're going to San Antonio. He's like, huh? I'm like, oh, so when I go to the national conference, he's like, come to the national conference, da, da, da. So it's like, you have to put yourself out there. Now he knows me. He knows GovCon Giants. He knows what we do. So he's like, I'm never going to forget my professional clicker. I was like, of course not. So it's those relationships you build um, through industry days. Next week, yeah. I'll be in, Orla in LA doing the Black History event. And then I'll be in Orlando doing a vet transitioning event. And then I'm going to Tallahassee doing SBDC Capital Day and stuff like that. So you have to put yourself out there. Um, for us, is putting GovCon Giants out there because 
you stumbled upon it through YouTube. And that's how most people do. But a lot of people that I've noticed that I've, I'm like, who are you guys? Um, some people know it. Like yesterday, it's like, yeah, I got the book. And I'm like, oh, really? And then some people don't know what it is and have to explain it. So it's for us to be able to put it all out there for people to know who we are. And that because for everyone that looks like us to be able to have this information, like all this information you've given them, like where else would they get it from? You're right. Um, but one thing I will say is a lot of it also is the information is present, right? But information doesn't mean, doesn't mean anything if you don't put it into practice. So for example, you and I, we go to industry day, right? We go meet people, we get on a call, we call, we contact, we repeat the process over and over mm -hmm. and over again, like the air we breathe. You're breathing every day until the day you stop, right? Yeah. You stop breathing, guess what? There's no forward progress being made, right? Mm -hmm. Same thing. So the application of the process is what's going to get everyone to their first contract. You can't sit still. You sit still, nothing happens. People just yeah. come past you, that's it, Right. But part of it is not just, it's getting out there and meeting people. Because when you strip everything away, no emails, no phone calls, at the end of the day, it's interacting with another human being. And that's the basis of this, of the, of, of, of the federal industry. And a lot of people fail to see that. Like, like you said, it's interacting with another human being. That's it. Like, we were scared to call contracting offers, small business specialists. Like, we're scared to go up to people at um events like, oh, he's this, he's that. I'm like, and I think we have to get over that because you have yeah. to build those relationships to get to the next phase of how can you guys help each other now? Yes. And like you said, they have to trust you as a person in order to give you a contract to do something. Right. But that doesn't happen again without either two things building a relationship and or a reference references go a long way what i can tell you is and this is another thing that i can i can honestly say i have never used any type of online ads i've never used marketing a lot of my business has come from references because mm. what happens is when i meet people and i work with them you know what happens? I do the, the most utmost job I can do. They're very happy. So you know what happens when they transfer companies? Hey, Colin, I'm now working with mm -hmm. this company. You want to work with us? That's how we're, most of my clients, that's how they came to me. That's how I got them. I'm working with them. They move to another company and they're like, oh, okay. Yeah, I know a rock star guy who can help. All my clientele, that's how I got them. They literally move and they, they take me with them because I'm a very dependable person. And, and the same thing works with agencies. You know, if you have a, a CO who loves you, they're going to say, hey, I know someone else in another that you can, you can use. Yeah. You know what that does? It builds goodwill. And guess what now you don't have, guess what you don't have to do now? You ain't got to sell yourself because the person vouched for you. Mm -hmm. The power of a referral is worth its weight in gold, but you got to build it up though. Y'all yeah. have never seen me like on LinkedIn, Hey, my name is so-and-so. This is what I do. I don't do that. I don't advertise myself because for me, it's about building relationships. It's all about referrals. I've never taken out a Google ad. I've never taken out a Facebook ad. I've never put out a newspaper ad at all. The only advertising I do is on Cape, uh, Cape Billy briefings. Here's my name. Here's what I've done. And I've always supplied references. If you mm -hmm. need to call this person, don't, don't vouch. And the per the people who I send is people who know exactly how I do things. And they know me personally as well. Because the one thing I always recommend is get to know the person. You know, when I, the first time I had my second Ostabu call with one of the AMC Ostabus, the first lady was so nice. She hooked me up with her, with her colleague. Her colleague and I, we've been in contact now for about a year. The first time we met, she was like, yeah. I was like, how are you doing? She's like, great, great. I said, what's going on? You sound a little perturbed. What's going on? She's like, well, you know, my daughter just moved to Georgia and she's really looking for a house. And, you know, her and her boyfriend are trying to find something. It's hard. It's hard out there, too, to find a place. I said, okay. 
I said, okay, no problem. I understand. And so we, so we talked some more. The next day, I sent her a list of first-time home buying programs in Georgia. She jumped on the phone and she said, Colin, what, what is this? I said, here's what your daughter can use to buy a house. Here's the program. Here's how much they will give her if she qualifies. I recommend she do it first, you know, um, and this is how much usually what they did. Because most people don't know about that. No. So she was like, oh, my God, is there anything I can do for you? I said, no, no, no. It just This is just information. I'm not doing this to get. I just want to help you because you help me and tell me what I need to do to work with you and your agency. Aww. But this is this is for what I want to help you personally. After that, we started talking about personal stuff. It, it became less and less about mm -hmm. what, they, what I'm what I can do for the agency. I'm like, girl, we can go on vacation. I don't know. I said, well, you know, you and your partner need to do something. So I started <laughs> sending her places to go. Have you been here? You've been here. No, I've I've been here. I said yes. So then she's like, oh, okay. I said, hey, no, your daughter needs a vacation too because. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So over the last year, when we talk, it's not about well, she keeps like, you know what you're saying. I'm like, I'll get there. But 90% of the conversation is about what have you done this year? What what are you what are you working on now? Personally, things like that. How's your dog and things like that? Mm -hmm. That's how you build a personal relationship. They want to know you care. Yeah. My other contact with my, you know, my um my DC agency, I ask her all the time, how are your kids? You know, I'm like, hey, you need me. Here's my number. Call me. No. And I cater. <clears throat> I cater to their personal needs first and foremost. Mm -hmm. What do you want your career to look like? How can I help you get promoted at your job? People don't think about that. No. How can I help you get promoted? It's because think about it. Their job is to find people like us to fulfill the needs, to connect them with the CEO, because they're the they're the gate. They're vetting. Yeah. You don't think it's going to look good if they say I had five rock star companies that came in this year and did really well for the agency. That's going to look good on their resume. The CEO is going to say the same thing. I found by by way of this Austin group, we were con we were connecting with five rock star companies, did really well. It's going to look good for the agency because you know what they're going to do? They're going to put it on their statement. Hey, we did really well. Oh, yeah. No different than state level. I found a rock star company to do this. And they help me get to where I want to go. When my POC on the agency level, uh, the, uh, lit local level, told me what she, her goal was, I said, I got you. I told her, I'm going to help you get there. Because my performance, guess what, is tied to her, her getting a raise. If you don't understand that, if you help them personally where they want to go, where they want to go career-wise, there's nothing they're not going to do for you. They're not going to put that contract down next. They're like, no, I'm going to stick with him because he cares about me mm -hmm. personally. Yeah. How can I personally be of service? Everyone's human. Yes. You do that. You'll have, they're, they're not going to go anywhere. They're not going to put out that contract next year for to find out who else can I work with. Oh, your budget's not enough. Okay, I'll work with you. Well, let, let's work. I, I, I got you. Oh, you sure? Yes. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I never want to be in a situation where a person, an agency, a contracting officer, an officer who cannot depend on me because of their budget. I know they're going to get read up next year, but if you know what, you ran out of money, I got you. It's okay. Let's, let's get this done. Because my job is to make sure they look good at the end of that budget cycle. They meet their goals. They meet their mission-specific goals. I want them to look good when they're in front of their boss and they're getting evaluated to say, hey, what did you do this year? And who, who, which, which contractors did you work with? And who was one that we want to work with again? I want them to look good. That's all I care about. If I can make you look good, I've done my job. Awesome. All right. So in the last five years, a lot has happened. Yes. A lot more is going to happen. And you've given a lot of people a lot of advice and from business, personal, every single way. So what would your work, let's close it up. And what would you tell someone that is sitting at home and they 
they hear a government contract, they saw this movie, somebody told them, and now they want to do it. Like, what would be your advice for them? I would say picture what you want the next phase of your life to look like past the age of 60. Whatever that looks like, you need to work now to get there. You, you envision your future and you work backwards. Because at 60, usually that's when most folks retire. They want to live an easy, easy life, a more comfortable life, right? Yeah. And it's never too late to start. You know, you have folks like uh, the guy who starts Sony, McDonald's. Y'all start, y'all like, well, what's, what's mm. the, the best example I give the guy from KFC? Oh. Uh. Right? He didn't get, he, he, 70, was it 70 when he got, he, yeah, he in the 70s or 80s when he started right. going door to door with right. his chicken recipe. Within 10 years, a guy was wealthier than, good Lord, a lot of people. He yeah. didn't give up. So all I'm saying is picture, you know, envision what you want your life to look like and just work on it. That's all, you you know, I mean, that's all I can say. Like, you got a picture. What, you, what do you want your life to look like and work on it? That's it. That's what I would say. Okay. And what are your goals this year? Like, what is your one thing that you want to achieve this year now? My goal this year is very simple. I need, and I, I, my goal is to get a contract as a prime with a federal agency. That's my goal. It's February, so I still got time. Yeah, and you have and I, capability yeah. briefings with, you said you right. have and I don't care how small the contract is. I'm as not, you know. As long as the name if, is on that top of that right. form. Right. If it's 10 bucks, I'll take it. I just want to be listed in FPDS as a, <laughs> as a contract winner. That's my goal this year. Well, you're doing everything it takes. And I'm sure that everything you, and I'm a big believer, like everything you give back will come back to you tenfold. Of course. So I know in our community, you are very important. People come to you for a lot of advice because they see how much you've grown, how much you could do and just your confidence. And that is what they're seeking to get to that level. So I'm still learning though, Marie. I mean, I learn every day we from all you, do. Eric. Every, yeah. I mean, I'm not, you know, I, I'm not, I don't know everything, but I do learn you know, because that's a good thing about being part of a community. I learn too. I mean, I learn everything. When every time, every Tuesday, I learn things on the calls, things I don't even know, things I, I take back and implement. I write it down, implement it, write it down, implement it. That's all we can do. Yeah. You know, but I do think what I, the thing I can say is I believe being part of a community is good for accountability. You know, but you got to do the work though. I mean, if you don't do the work, you can't say, well, I didn't get one a contract. Like, yo, that's on you. Yeah, you know, people sit around and expect it just to come find them. No. And we all know everyone that's been successful, somewhat successful in this, will tell you we've been had some very early mornings, some very late nights. Some oh yeah, take your hair out of your head proposals, rush through to make it to a site visit, understanding these contracts and all that in order to get to that first win. Yes, but again, and you're right, Maria, but again, people got to ask themselves, what do you want your future to look like? That's it. Yeah. And that Would you rather build someone else's dream or your own? Which one's going to be more profitable that's going to earn you a, a greater return on your invested time into yourself? People answer that question, you know, then it's really a no-brainer at that point. And that's the that's where we'll leave it and because i need people to ponder on that like what is your dream and are you building somebody else's dream and we're gonna yeah. like colin's dad for that one <laughs> yeah i love my dad he's uh there's a lot of quotes he used to tell me but it was true but he lived it though that's the thing um and one of the things i'll say also is i think it's important to have a mentor you need someone who's going through it to, to show you the ropes. Now, my dad was the first one, right? But the, when I first, he was my first mentor, still is. However, when I did do government contracting in 2016, it was my first exposure to it, right? 
did I know what it was? No, but at least I was, I was, I was walking that path, absorbing what I was seeing. And one thing I would recommend people, if you don't know, find someone who does partner with someone, you know, we don't have to go that this alone. I still work with people who are far further up, further ahead than I am because I'm learning as I go along. You know, when you look at proposals, you're like, oh, you know, if, if like one thing I can say is when I used to work on proposals back in the day as a junior designer, you kind of get to know what kind of people you need. Mm. You know, you still got to, you know, you got to learn. You know what I'm saying? I'm all about learning with each other, you know, let and, and partner up. I always tell people, if you don't know, go pull down an old solicitation and write it. That's what I used to do. Do I write? I can't write. I'm, I don't know how to write. That's why I hired a writer this year. I suck. You know what I'm saying? You know what I have? Okay, let me tell you what happened real quick in closing, right? I submitted a solicitation. It was a, it was a catastrophic mistake. I failed too. I submitted a proposal to the Department of State for work. You know what they told me? They said, you know what? You We love your stuff, but we, we're not going to go with you because of your grammatical and typographical errors. I'm like, Ooh. oh, yeah. Your I have that email. Players. Yes. I'm like, I, I, I can't do this no more. So you know what I did? I'm like, okay, Colin, get a writer. Stop being annoying and get a mm-hmm. writer. Let me not do this myself. So when I did that, now I'm having my entire everything, marketing statement, position, everything redone because it's my voice, but I'm not, the, I can't, I shouldn't write it. No, that's why I always tell people, hire the people who are going to make you look good. I say that in closing. All righty. Well, thank you. Thank you very much for, thank you for coming having on me. and telling us all your secrets and your There's story long journeys and your quotes. It is. And I'm sure people are going to be very excited when we tell them that it's coming. So yes. well, thank you again and hope you have thank a you. wonderful weekend. You too. Thank you for having me. Bye. Bye-bye.